Hello everybody, it's Alistair here again and I have another uh, daily challenge for you. A cool one I think this time because we are going to be looking at tessellation, uh, what that is and how we can create our own tessellating pattern which is a really fun activity and always and as always has lots and lots of directions that you can take it off in after you've completed the um, basic challenge. So what I want to do to kick things off is just show you some things if that's okay. So um, tessellation, here's the word here for those of you that like to see it with your own eyes, tessellation. What is tessellation? Well basically tessellation is a maths term, mathematical term um, describing the way that some shapes can be used, like this one here, to cover an entire piece of paper or a plane, to use the, um, the proper mathematical term, without any gaps or spaces. So basically it means a shape that can fit together perfectly with itself to completely cover a sheet. So this is one good example here where this arrow has been used in different orientations to completely cover this sheet and um, coloured in a sort of repeating way to create this really cool image. Um, this is a triangle which has been tessellated. Uh, you can see that the same thing has been done with this sort of whizzer. And then you can get tessellations where um, it's a combination of shapes as well. Um, so this is a good example here. So my suggestion with this um, task is that you do it in uh, sort of at least two bits. So this is um, a resource here that will link below this YouTube video and also on the Facebook page if you're coming to it from the Facebook page. We have a triangle here and the idea of this um, sheet here is that you practice tessellating these shapes. So you can see with the triangle here it's two along the bottom and two up and then we just join those points to complete <coughs> the triangle. Excuse me. So it's um, an isosceles triangle. So what you can do on this sheet is you can go ahead and draw it in upside down there and then the right way up again and then upside down there. Gives you really good practice at drawing with a ruler um, and using squares to uh, get accurate repetitions of a shape. And then you can come underneath it and draw it upside down below that one and then continue it on there. And pretty soon you'll have completed your first tessellation. You can color it. Um, or you can go on to the next one, which is the, the same idea, but with this hexagon. So again, you know, starting from there, you would see how you can complete the hexagon and bring it around like that. And once you've done two or three of those, you'd start to find that you had hexagon um, shaped holes in your paper. So you, you don't have to do sort of every shape because some of them just get formed by the other ones that you're making. And then this cross will work <coughs> in exactly the same way there and you can repeat that. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, it depends how, um, how, how into it um, you get with that one how uh, you know much time you want to spend on that. Uh, so that is that one. And then the other resource that I want to introduce you to is this one here, which is how to make your own tessellation template. And I'm going to do that with you in a second. I'm going to attempt to demonstrate it. But if I end up um, confusing you or you need to revisit the instructions for doing this, then this um, PowerPoint will also be linked uh, in the uh, below the YouTube video and again in the Facebook group. So I'm going to um, come back to you now to talk to you about making this template. Uh, and the place to start with this is with um, a rectangle. It can be any type of rectangle, but you need to give yourself some room to uh, work with and um, think about the size because you're going to be tessellating the shape that's made from this rectangle 
don't have it too huge because you'd only fit like two or four um, repeated tessellation, repeated um, shapes on your piece of paper. So something like around this type of size is good. Um, and then what we're going to do is we are going to start by um, just drawing uh, a line on it from top to bottom. And we're going to keep that quite simple at the moment. Okay, so there we go. Uh, and <clears throat> as I say, this is something that is worth keeping simple to begin with, but you can then get more adventurous with as you go along. And then all we're going to do is we're going to cut that out. Just give me a second to do that. And then I'll show you the next step. So once it is cut out like that, what we're going to do is we're just going to pass the separate pieces over each other so that the two straight edges line up. Let me just pop a piece of tape on that and then show you again. Okay, so there we go. So that shape will already um, tessellate. You can see how that would fit into that on your piece of paper. It'd be a bit dull though, because we'd have kind of a straight line all across the page. So we're gonna do this again, um, same process, but this time where we made a horizontal, uh, sorry, a vertical cut before, we're now going to have a uh, horizontal wiggle something like that okay and I'm going to do the same thing again I'm going to cut along that just bear with me for one second while I do that okay so now I've cut that like that and again I'm going to slide it one piece over the other so that the two straight edges are together I'm just going to quickly pop a piece of tape on that while you bear with me okay and there we go so we've got that um, shape there and we can see that actually um, it's a little bit scrappy this because I've done it quickly but we can see that that piece would end up fitting into there and you can also see how this uh, this piece here would end up fitting into there so when I um, you know, perhaps one thing you might want to think about doing is uh, putting that on a piece of card and drawing around it so that your template is easier to work with. Plonk the first one anywhere um, on the page and you will quickly see how you can build up your tessellating pattern around it. Uh, and it should be quite fun to do and pleasing to see that um, page get filled. So let's quickly talk about how you can um, extend this task. So the first and obvious thing that you can do is when you've tessellated your pattern, make it look lovely by coloring it in a kind of um, pattern, perhaps a pattern of color, painting it um, to make it look even more beautiful. Uh, and then you can again, like I think we've talked about already, experiment with more complicated shapes, different ways to cut up your rectangle, um, until you find things that you that you really like. Um, another thing that you can do, and I'll link this resource um, below the video and on the Facebook thread, is investigate which 2D shapes tessellate because you'll find that some do and, and some don't. And if you can um, you know, get where you could say which ones you think would tessellate and which ones wouldn't, then you've really developed a kind of maths uh, understanding of the idea as well. And then just finally, I'm gonna mention an artist called M.C. Escher, who was famous for basing some of his artwork on uh, the way images tessellated, but he did some really, really funky things with tessellation. So I'd recommend that you, at some point um, during this challenge before or after, you check out some of his works of art that were made using the theory and principle of tessellation. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this challenge. Share anything cool that you do with us as always and look forward to seeing you again soon on another daily challenge.